Hi, my name is Mitra Manesh. I'm a servant. I serve through teaching, coaching, consulting, or any other way that I can find to share what I know with those who want to know. And this Lights On podcast is one of those ways. It was created with consciousness and mindful living in heart. So join us as we travel through many roads of learning and transformation together. And if you enjoy our podcast, please give us feedback by rating us five star and share us with others if you think they may benefit from it. On behalf of my team, I thank you for your presence. This episode is about our relationship with ourselves. I uh, coached a very interesting young woman who had learned to live in the survival mode and it became more tough and rough, mainly with herself and outwardly, definitely. And the conversation went to interesting places. A lot of actually uh, insights came from her, uh, but I took that insight and and sort of put it in a different uh, packaging. It came from her heart. It came from her mind. And my invitation to her was to take it and and really bring it from the heart perspective. Uh, same process completely different results, having an understanding of ourselves, having a sense of what's going on and where we want to go to and how we're feeling from the position of the mind, from the perspective of the rational mind, is very different than the heart perspective and energetically in a far more compassionate and loving way. Let's take a listen together. I hope you enjoy it. I definitely enjoyed working with Phoenix and it was very rewarding for me. Hi Phoenix and welcome to Lights On Podcast. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really great. Thank you for uh, volunteering to be coached and I know that uh, you have given us permission to use your real name, and so it's going to be easier. All right, let's just uh, start by... Thank you for choosing me. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Um, let's just breathe together for a second, and I want you to just connect to your bodily sensations, also to any feelings or emotions that might be available to you right now. And let us start by connecting to whatever is present for you. So I'm going to tell you that whatever or wherever you start, that's a great place to start. There's no wrong place. Just tell me what's in your awareness and then I would love to hear a little bit more about you since we can go public with your information and just tell mm -hmm. us about who you are and, and what you do and what's really alive for you in this moment. So, let's go. Uh, well, you said there's no right or wrong answer, but when you, <laughs> you, you communicate very effectively, so it kind of makes me want to um, give you the information you're specifically seeking for me. Sure. Um, but I will say I made a major move recently, um, that I procrastinated over for about seven years. I finally made a decision to move to Los Angeles from New York City. Um, I don't have any siblings and I'm not very close to my family. So, um, I'm not quite sure what kept me from making this decision, um, I guess it's subconsciously fear or um, just feeling uh, like I would be by myself. Um, but in actuality, I've kind of always felt like I was by myself in a lot of ways. Um, I think that uh, recently I've been trying to do a lot of shadow work on myself and just kind of like figuring out 
what I've been carrying that is my personal issues and what of other people, my transactions with other people, what I may be carrying from them that has nothing to do with me and kind of knowing the difference. And so I realized I am triggered by poverty. I've grown up without, I don't want to say poor. I don't like to use those words. I try to be super intentional. Um, but I grew up without a lot of the things that other people around me had yet. Uh, I, and I don't want to sound like self-absorbed, but I found that people were jealous of me for the things that money couldn't buy mm-hmm. while I was longing for the things that they had that money could buy. Um, so I was, it was always very peculiar for me that people didn't like me because it was always in my mind, like, I have less than you. Why, why wouldn't you, you know, why would you feel away to someone who doesn't even have as much as you? But, you know, as you get older, you learn everything valued isn't about something tangible or monetary. Um, so I've kind of always felt like a black sheep. Um, but I don't want to use that as like a way to be a victim. Um, I kind of found my identity in that and, I'm a singer, songwriter. I'm an artist. I was a songwriter for many years and I decided to put out music, not because I wanted to be famous or I wanted to be an artist, but I just felt like who was going to represent people who felt like me if it wasn't me. Um, and so that's been my motivation, but I know partially my, my issues with like being traumatized by poverty. Um, a lot of times I'm working harder and not smarter. And so I'm trying to get to a place in life where I can discern what I should put a lot of energy into and what I should allow the universe and time to manifest on its own. And so my transition into Los Angeles is me trying to slow down. Hmm. Um, but why, I say trying because I kind of just threw my back out. And I think that that was a part of me doing too much too soon or trying to do too much and not knowing when to take a break. So I've always kind of had this issue of kind of, I feel like going from, from left to right. I mean, either I feel like I'm not doing enough or I'm doing too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really want to find that balance because I know I would be more effective and I probably would get a lot of the things I want to get done if I actually had a re- realistic trajectory um, on how to get these things done. Wow. What a great intro. Thank you for that. (laughs) First of all, I'm noticing how aware you are and how much work you have done on yourself, which is fantastic. I'm also noticing, and please uh, correct me wherever I go wrong, because, you know, I'm just uh, going with what I'm hearing. And Mm -hmm. uh, for the purpose of other people's information, we've never met before and we've never talked before, so I have no other information except what you're providing to me. But what I'm also hearing is uh, there's a lot of awareness. You're you're really getting um, very clear about your life. And the question that I would bring out when somebody is on that journey is that when you become aware, are you becoming a little bit analytical or are you are more into understanding yourself and bringing compassion to yourself? And allow me to separate these two so that uh, you know I'm clear about what I am saying. So I could tell you, for instance, um, say I had this relationship and that relationship because um, I don't know my father died very early when I was young. Okay, so then Mm -hmm. I can go to analysis of that, which is very helpful, but we do sometimes overanalyze ourselves. In Mm -hmm. doing that, we get stuck in our head because analysis uh, takes place in our mind, in our rational mind, because that's Mm -hmm. what its job is. And then we become very aware, so I have a lot of information. But then that connection with self and self journey may not fully be there. So I can analyze myself. I can tell you because my father died early. This is what I did with men. And that's why I had this relationship and that relationship. And they will be all accurate, by the way. But, but at one stage, I need to just calm down from my rational mind and say, Ooh, I see you. I see you, myself, my dear self. In your case, dear Phoenix, I see you. I feel you. 
must have been very challenging. Can you bring that compassion instead of like, you know, come on, soldier on. Can't you see it? You got it, didn't you? Uh, you know, go and get it now. You should know better. And, and and I'm exaggerating, of course, my voice, but maybe I'm not. Sometimes we just think once we get it, whatever that is, meaning when we comprehend it with our minds, then we just need to go. And that could be the reason for your speed and the way you're going. You are a little bit sounding a bit judgmental about yourself to me. I'm going to stop mm -hmm. and see how you feel about what I just said. No, I think it's totally accurate. I actually, um, I have a roommate that has been kind of validating that, but in like a loving way to me, mm -hmm. even when I have conversations with him about me doing that. Um, when I was younger, I was told that I was sensitive a lot. I not think that that created an extreme mm -hmm. character in me of going from like being crying about everything to like not crying about anything. Mm. Um, and so I think my life is just me constantly challenging extremes of like, <laughs> you know, even now, like I'm totally aware of everything you're saying and I'm trying to find my way back to the middle, but I've also, and this is, this is very, I, I believe this is a bit of a toxic way of thinking, but I almost believe that like compassion is a luxury mm -hmm. because I've always had to be in survival mode. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a mother who suffered severe depression and a lot of emotional issues my entire childhood. So it's like I didn't have that outlet to go to someone to to show me compassion because I had to think about, quote unquote, the realistic things, mm -hmm. you know, laundry and food shopping and getting up and going to school. So there was no time to, you know, to really feel sad. And then the times that I did feel sad, I was made to feel like there was something wrong mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, or being affected by things in a deep and an emotional way. So I think even in my brass, you know, exterior that may come across to people, it's still covering a very sensitive person. I just have to protect that person because, um, you know, I was persecuted for, for being like that. So mm -hmm. I have to kind of just, I, I, I have a lot of childhood traumas that I'm, I'm constantly trying to disassociate from in a healthy way. And I think I, I've always been super analytical. I think because I'm in a reflective moment, I'm probably just using that skill in this as well, instead of approaching it from a more compassionate way, because everything can, you can't apply the same strategy to every aspect of your life. <laughs> and definitely you can't uh, use the strategy that got you to the place that you are in order to heal it. So few things I heard. First of all, let me say something about uh, the extremes. Anybody that um, does extreme things and tries to show an extreme sort of version of themselves, that means we're covering something. We all do it, by the way, Phoenix. I want you to say it. I want you to see if you can find that um, kinder voice to speak about yourself, because I'm hearing that as if you are this problem that we need to fix, like there's something wrong and we need to just fix it and fix you. And I want to hear a kinder, I mean, I'm going to my heart as I'm speaking to you. I can feel you. Um, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but like very motherly, very nurturing feeling that I'm accessing right now. And I'm saying, yeah. can you do the same for yourself? Because Believe me, I always say this. People talk about dysfunctional families and dysfunctional upbringing. I have been doing this work for 36 years on four continents, and I am yet to meet a fully functional family. Mm -hmm. Of course, our dysfunctionalities are different. They look different. They have different tone and different colors and different cultures to it. But really, in, in the essence of a child receiving it, we more or less all, I would say all, but I'm very hesitant to always, especially publicly, say anything all um, or always. Most of us come from parents who weren't trained to be parents. I mean, it's understandable. If you think about it, you buy a new phone, it comes with a lot of instructions. You bring a new life to this world and there are no instructions. 
and our role models themselves are not healthy role models. So I want you to let go of that scenario, that story that I'm hearing that I had it bad or really what that translates to, that's the problem. I was bad or I am bad. Um, no, we came from dysfunctionalities and there were some problems and here we are able, fully able, I'm not sure if willing, but definitely able to <laughs> re-parent ourselves. And I know it's a term that it's used, but I don't mean it in the way in a physical way, that I buy myself that which they did not buy me, even though that's great if you can do it, but really give yourself emotionally, give yourself um, energetically, lovingly support and understanding and pause and patience that they did not give you. So it takes it to a different place because instead of wanting to sort of just come on ourselves and, and sort of a tough love that we may have experienced or we may have associated with success, whatever that means, then the voice settles down. And I want to tell you that true love, true care has a lot of patience, a lot of patience. If I'm saying I care for your story, I need to listen to you. I need to really get into your voice, get into your story, get into how you're feeling in order to really access my care for you. So that patience for you is something that I would start with. And very interesting that you said that your back is hurting and back is very symbolic. Just think about it. I mean, they say such and such was so heavy, it broke my back right? So mm -hmm. that's the connotation. That's the symbolism. You must be carrying something more than you were able to carry in order to physically or energetically hurt your back. Does that go home for you? It does. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. And going from one extreme to another is just as unhealthy and imbalanced. We have a, I'm, I'm Persian, I'm original, I originally come from Iran. We have a saying in Farsi that says, there are two ways you can fall from the top of a roof. Somebody was standing on the edge and someone said, go back, you're going to fall. And he went so further back that he fell from the other side of the roof. So mm. going to that side and being, you know, um, you know, tough and rough with yourself because that you were told, and that's other people's stories. I don't know what that means. You were sensitive. That means you felt emotions. <laughs> Sorry, children are supposed to be doing that. But um, whatever, whether it was their story or your story, I, I think you just need to take a pause. Attend it to was yourself. almost, it was almost, uh, I guess I can intellectualize it as an adult. I think what it said to me is that I won't survive in this world if I have feelings. Right. Right. And uh, <laughs> it's interesting you use that word. I just finished a, um, a lesson about the difference between feelings and emotions. So mm. feelings are the way we receive information from life. In fact, there's three ways that we do. It's from seeing or hearing or feeling. Huh? Like I sit next to you and sometimes you don't even need words. And I feel like, oh, I like to connect with this person. It feels good. You haven't said anything. We haven't exchanged anything. But you just feel good. It's a way of receiving information. Emotions, on the other hand, are the feeling that go through the filter of fear. So now I feel good, but then my mind says, oh, remember the last time you were vulnerable and you talked to somebody you didn't know? Do, do you remember what happened? They ended up hurting you. Do you remember? So be careful. 
be careful. So I immediately feel anxious. Oh my God, what is she going to do? Who does she know? Is she going to talk bad about me? Is she going to hurt me? So I become fearful. That's an emotion. Really, emotion is feeling gone wrong, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. So feelings are allowed. Even emotions are welcomed because they have information for us feelings. I mean, they do. If I'm feeling nervous, I need to know where, where, what, where is it coming from? How can I settle down? What am I not accepting? Where am I not being fair to myself? And those are the information we need. You don't need to be in any particular way except the authentic way to really do well. In my view, and my doing well is a little bit different than probably most people's doing well. By doing well, I mean really being happy and being at peace with yourself. Yeah. How are you feeling right now? Tell me what's going on in you because I can't see you. I just think you're right. I'm, uh, I don't understand how we're exactly I built this uh, this wall or how it got so high or mm. um, yeah. And maybe you don't need to know, Phoenix. You don't need to know how. You know what the better question would be is how can I build a better life and better relationship with myself it's not because you're still focusing on what went wrong how did I do that oh I don't know go and find 18,000 reasons it goes to our ancestors I don't know but I can tell you how you can help yourself how, how you can be um, gentler more loving more considerate, more patient with yourself. And those are the better questions that you can ask. Um, <laughs> I always say, my teacher used to say, we're never short of answers in life. It's just we're most of the time asking wrong questions in life. You're asking why I feel this way. How did I build these bad walls for myself? Uh, I don't know, somebody need to know every minute of your life and, and the, uh, all the things that your family came with. Well, that's a hard way. But let's change the question. How can I... Uh, let me tell you what I asked myself before this session. You know what my question was? What's that? How can I serve Phoenix? Ooh. Can you ask the same question? How can I serve Phoenix? I didn't ask what's wrong with me, what's wrong with her, what's what, what, how do I impress her? I could ask that, you know, from time to time I do. But I asked myself, how can I serve? And that's my to go to, if you like, prayer, for lack of a better word, that I do it before sessions. I say, how can I serve this person? And immediately, something opens up that there is no way I could open it up, not with my limited powers. So I want you to see if you can find it in yourself to ask the same question, at least for the time being, that your back is hurting and your heart is hurting and you, you're not right in your center and you have a lot of questions and you just had a major change and you left your familiar life and you're in a new place. Why don't we just start fresh with a different energy and different approach? How can I serve Phoenix today? What do you want, my child? Ask yourself. That's the reparenting. I can uh, analyze all the things that my mother and your mother did wrong, no problem. And it will be all accurate, probably. But, okay, what does that do? Where does that get me? It gets me into understanding, which is great, and you got the understanding already. But how can I serve myself better? Yeah. Does that go home for you, Phoenix? Yeah. It does. <laughs> I'm trying to not think, but it's it's hard for me not to analyze <laughs> things. Mm -hmm. I guess that's just a 
a habit I've created that I'm not, I subconsciously wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. No problem. I mean, that's what got you here, but let's see what gets you there because it is there that you want to go to. And, and that's fine. You're right. It's because we're in survival mode. Absolutely. You're right on. We are in survival mode. So if a lion was chasing us, you don't stand there and analyze these things and am I patient with myself and my kid? <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. Before you do that, you will be eaten, you know? Mm. So we go to safety and, and I hope that you bring that sense of safety to yourself. And, and then ask yourself, how can I attend to myself better? How can I, I mean, you would do that if, if just imagine if, if you were my friend and I asked you, Phoenix, my daughter is coming to town and I'm not going to be here. Would you please for a day, just go and pick her up and take care of her and say you agree. The first thing you do, and you don't know, you've never met her, you say, how can I, what can you do? What, what would you like? Are you vegetarian? Do you want a steak? What will serve you? What do you want? And I'm saying, can you ask that of yourself? And those are only outwardly needs. But, you know, you well, may think, say, just hear me. Go ahead. I think, I think what, uh, what's uncomfortable about this, and, uh, I guess that's what's making me cry is, uh, I feel like I do this for everyone else but myself. Wow. It, mm-hmm. And I recently just like distanced myself from somebody I was really close to because I was like, you know, I never give expecting. I've given things to people years ago that people tell me, you remember when you got this for me? That I absolutely don't remember because I give in love. And if it's for you, if I feel like it's for you, it's for you. And once I give it to you, it's yours. And I was like, I've known this person since I was 11 years old. I'm 35. And I was like, I've never received a birthday card. Mm. Like nothing. And it's just like, I've, you know, I've given you, you know, when I wanted to or when I felt the need to. I recently, uh, when I moved to L.A., I took a road trip from New York. And I I purposely did that not only to be safe, but to get to see my family. So I kind of, well, my extended family, because I'm an only child, but the people I've, I've grown to love as mm-hmm. family. And, um, you know, I basically opened my luggage everywhere I went, you know, and I was just like, take, you know, whatever you want. Um, you know, I have a lot to give and it's just me like, take it out. I'll, I'll get it back when I move. I don't, I don't need all of this stuff. Um, but I'm the type of person like I can have something for years and I'll, I'll keep it a certain way. So if you were to take it from me, you wouldn't know if I bought it yesterday or if I bought it a year ago, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I take value in my things. And, uh, I was just like, in all of this time, like you've never felt inclined to do anything for me. And, um, I was like, I have to back away, not because I blame this person for not returning the love, but for the fact that I've been accepting this for this long and so i guess that that was the uh the unveiling of me i guess i didn't get to make the connection until today that a part of that may be me recognizing that i don't extend that to myself Mm -hmm. i want to give you a secret to life because i've lived here almost uh no not twice as much but 30 more years almost than you and the secret to this world and the way people treat us is this The world treats you the way you treat yourself, not the way you say I want to be treated. They watch you and then they treat you exactly the same way sooner or later. So be a good example for them. Open your suitcase to yourself and say, honey, take whatever you want. And then watch the world treat you differently. So you're showing them, really, I do not matter. And then you're saying, why are you treating me like I do not matter? Because they learned it from you. So it's a lot of response. I hope you hear this as empowerment, not as blame. Because No, I get it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, because that's very important. This is empowerment. If it's in my hand, then I can do it. 
But if it was in somebody else's hand, I got to go and beg them. I'm going to say, you know, uh, you know, Mary, James, John, you know, whoever, please do this to me. But, you know, I can just change it. I can be a great example of how I want you as my friend, as my family, as my neighbor, as my daughter to treat me. I'll show you instead of tell you. In fact, when I show you, I don't need to even tell you because you can see, mm-hmm. you can see how I treat myself. Yeah. Okay. Is this enough for today, Phoenix? Yes. It's <laughs> a lot. A lot to unpack. So, great. I'm really glad to summarize it because I'm a coach and I like to summarize is what I said was that you have a great understanding of yourself, but it's mainly from your mind perspective. It's more analytical than compassionate and loving. So bring that understanding and that insight about yourself and turn it and hear it from your heart's point of view, not from your mind's point of view. That's the first thing I said. And the second thing I said was that you can actually take charge of reparenting yourself instead of staying stuck in the past and saying what whoever did and how what was wrong with them and all of that. Well, the thing with that is, is that I don't want to do that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to accept my position in that, if that makes sense. Like I've, Mm -hmm. I've, I've went past that stage of like, dwelling in the past for those reasons I kind of only mentioned it because I feel like subconsciously I'm carrying some of that with me even though consciously I want to feel like I've let it go Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what the what the disconnect is to me finally letting it go Mm. and I think that is to reparent yourself because subconscious has far more power on us than conscious I mean that's the problem it's like if I have a leak in the basement and I hear I am happy on the third floor and singing and dancing, and my home is being flooded from the basement. So that's what sub is. Sub is under, is like the floor you don't see. So that was the second point. And the third point was basically to change the way you treat yourself, which will result in changing the way others treat you. So I hope that. These are helpful uh, insights and conversations for you. I hope you can hold yourself lovingly and take care of yourself and that back. That back also has information for you and says to you, please be patient with me and please take it easy and love me. Yes, ma'am. Thank (laughs) you so much. A pleasure. A, A beautiful pleasure to connect with you. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, we'll connect sometimes later. Take good care, Phoenix. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye. Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. Until the next time, be well and stay curious.